All right, this is a, a request from our buddy, uh, Nonstop Dre. And it originally started, uh, he says, uh, where is his original question? He says, uh, a greeting, mystical Cassandra. It's mythical, Dre. Mythical, not mystical. Mythical. My question is, if all of your works from books, blogs, podcasts, and interviews got de deleted and banned from the internet, you weren't able to post anything online at all except for this video being your last and only truthful video with wisdom that was allowed to be online under your name for people to find in the future, but you were still able to do your Operation Evil after under whatever alias you will go under, what would you discuss in this video? You could discuss anything you want. Subscribe, sir, blah, 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 blah. And I say, you mean, what would I say if a video, if I was doing Operation Evil, like what lies I would tell people? He says... No, I meant if you could have only one legit, honest video that people would be able to find online with truth. <laughs> he got Napier. Uh, this video being it. <clears throat> if all of your past works from books to blogs got Thanos snapped from the internet and society under your name, you think can you you can think of this video as the Cliff Note summary version of your wisdom philosophy, major key points of all people to key and avoid. This video also being the only video that was allowed online. I say, oh, okay, so like a top 10 rules of Aaron Clary says, sure, like Cappy's commandments for life. It doesn't have to be 10, but whether, whatever number. So I decided to go with 10. Uh, there's certainly probably more, uh, and uh, I put it together. And so we're going to answer that. And then, uh, I don't know, if you want the next 10, somebody pay for us. <laughs> so I, I I was like, yeah, he wanted 10. I just read, oh, he wanted more. Here's the 10. Here's the 10 rules of Aaron Clary. All right. In no particular order. Traits have no value. Only accomplishments and achievements have value. But there's a little asterisk because men and women are different. <gasps> they are. <clears throat> Unless, the asterisk footnote, you are a woman, in which case youth and beauty also has value. So all humans... Your traits do not have value unless you are a woman, in which case beauty and youth also has value because men value it. So we got that there. So you cannot say like everyone's like, I'm this color skin and I'm that kind of gender. I'm this kind of belief and I'm that kind of mental. Ill. No, 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 no. Beliefs and traits you were born with or you chose to, I, I'm a vegan. I like animals. No, that's not value. That's not value. Value is what do you achieve and accomplish in life? That's value. It requires labor and effort and sacrifice, not merely existing. Uh, <clears throat> number two, this is a good one. You let evil and or inferior people punish themselves and enjoy their misery. In other words, you do not seek revenge. This was a hard lesson for me to learn. Vengeance was mine. So it's like, no, vengeance isn't yours. I want to kick that guy's ass. And I found out why. It's kind of like karma. You don't believe in karma until you get old. And you're like, wow, it really does. Evil and or inferior people, uh, they're lazy. They're evil. And the rest of society does not like getting screwed over by them. And uh, they may get away with it as bullies when they're bigger. This happened to a bully in my school. He's dead. Circumstances of his death, very interesting. He didn't make it more than... Four years past high school graduation, I'm wondering, did he pick on the wrong guy? Did he pick on a guy that was bigger than him for once? Did, did he pick on a guy that happened to have a gun or a knife? What happened? Can't find out what happened to a guy, but he's dead. And <clears throat> more so now that you get older and you see people that make stupid decisions or just jerks or mean, society doesn't tolerate jerk or mean people. All right. And so they're divorced, they get overweight, they're entitled, they think the world owes them a, a living, they're the rich popular girl treat everyone like crap, now they're the old washed up 50 year old post wall, uh, the know-it-all liberal arts major who got a master's degree is still you know panhandling for government, con the feminists who hate you and tell you that you have privilege and patriarchy and all that are still, you don't have to lift a finger to make these people miserable. All right. Uh, and all you really do in sinking revenge is you put yourself at risk legally, maybe even physically. And truthfully, you could pummel the most hated person in your life who rightly deserves it within an inch of their life. That's going to be a short and probably recoverable experience for them. And it won't come anywhere near the pain that life is going to teach them over the course of their lives, where they're constantly let down, things don't go their way. And above all else, what, what, you can't deliver that the real world can in terms of pain and revenge is why. They don't know why. They're insane. 
They are driven insane because no one tells them why. Life doesn't tell you why. Life doesn't tell you why you didn't get the job. Life doesn't tell you why. And if you're a truly arrogant enough person, you'll not, you'll never think it's you. And so you're forever condemned to, you know, whatever. Never get a job with your your liberal arts degree. Uh, never find a guy because you're an egocentric pain in the ass bitch. Uh, <clears throat> never get a gal because you don't hit the gym and you think girls will like me for me. <laughs> uh, you know, you just, all you got to like the guy cuts you off. Let him cut you. I got not too long. The kid came zooming by. I didn't get upset. You know why? Cause that kid is going to get a speeding ticket. He will cause an accident. It will happen. So just, just let life do the work for you. Know, and therefore you don't even have to get stressed out about it. You just let it happen. Um, <clears throat> rule number three, accept and enjoy what is showing in the theater of life. Do not ask for what you want in the, to see in the theater of life for that is guaranteed misery. Th this is where I call enjoy the show. What did I want in the theater of life? I wanted like a neo 1950s level of booming economic growth where everybody is making killer coin. Nuclear families are back. Women are hot wearing dresses, being feminine. Men are masculine. And we all go hang around at the cigar lounge of life. And we bibbity boppity boppity boopity. You know, that's that's what I wanted. I wanted low unemployment. I wanted great economic. That's what I wanted. That's not that's not showing today. If some of you remember my video, uh, traditional women with nuclear families and obedient children is not on the menu today, sir. You will drive yourself insane. You will make yourself miserable, constantly pining for what society cannot, will not, is not capable of giving. So what you have to do is what's showing on a theater of life? Well, watching idiots and leftists really screw up and make their lives miserable. Yes, they're destroying the United States and Western civilization at the same time. But man, <laughs> I don't want to be, I don't want to be some Antifa member taking, really think about it. how exciting is it? Well, maybe it is exciting. Do you want to be some leftist SJW crusader Antifa for a stereotype where your excitement is tearing down a statue and you're so ignorant, you just tore down the statue and abolitionists, they've torn down two, two guys. That, that fought against slavery. They tore two of their statues down. <laughs> Probably more. And then you go back to your life of what? Fighting the fash man. And the girls you date all have braided armpit hair. What? I, You know, that's the show. Watch it. Enjoy it. Be, sanity is one of the greatest gifts ever. That you, at least you know. And maybe it's not what you want to happen. But at least you know why it's happening. And so I just enjoy this. Song. Well, what's showing? That's the only, I guess I'll get my popcorn and enjoy it. I, I appreciate me being a minimalist and not slaving away 80 hours a week, make it 250,000. So the tax people can tax it at 200,000. I don't sit in, I don't sit in traffic. I watch other people sit in traffic. It's funny. It's a bit sadist. It's a bit dark. It's a bit misanthropic, but most humans are douchebags. So, you know, enjoy, enjoy the decline. Uh, rule number four, spend less than you make. It's a very simple one. I guess we could call that be a minimalist if we want something a little bit more encompassing. Uh, but you spend less than you make. It makes life a lot easier. Um, <clears throat> related to that is, and this allows you to spend less than you make. This is why you should all buy and read Poor Richard's Retirement. Uh, humans are the most important thing in life. The most important thing in life is going to be humans. Okay. They are infinite in their decisions. They are not finite entities. They have a mind. Uh, you can have all the cool doodattery and gadgetry in the world. You're going to get sick of your Ferrari. You're going to get sick of your video games. And no matter how awesome in graphics the video games are, you're going to need other. And the most important humans in life are going to be your spouse, your significant other, and any children that you're going to have in your life if you choose to have them. Here's now rule number five, which is the opposite coin of this rule. Humans are the number one cause of all your problems, <laughs> all your pain and strife. It's other humans. And so the, the takeaway from this rule is that you minimize your interaction with humans as much as possible. I'm not talking socially. I'm talking like your life, your livelihood should require the permission and participation and the authorization of the least amount of humans possible. Self-employment is the key thing. I don't need the HR lady's permission. I don't need to go get tested. I don't have to talk to my boss. I don't have to sit in meetings. I don't need permission to get, can I, can I make this chart that color? You know, literally sometimes it was that granular. 
It's just like, nope, I'm doing this. Bye. Um, even even something as small as like, oh, we're gonna take a vacation. Hey, do you all want to go together on a car? Nope, get my own car. You guys do because now I'm reliant upon you people. Uh, the problem though is that humans are so stupid and so brainwashed and so programmable and so inferior. Uh, me being part of that race, of course, um, that there are a precious, precious few percent that are going to make good friends, good lovers, good husbands, good wives, good colleagues. Uh, and sometimes they'll make the greatest ever, but then other they'll let other humans get in their lives and F up the works. So how many of you guys had your best friend and then he met a girl and he just went away and then he got married and you never heard. Then you got that card in the mail every Christmas. The Johnsons are doing real well. Little Timothy picked up hockey today and then all of a sudden he's divorced. <laughs> what the fuck were you for 15 effing years? So you want to have as little human participate. You want to rely on, on humans as least as possible, as little as possible. <clears throat> all right, here's another rule. This is what, number seven? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Wait, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, okay, so I think we're on seven. Uh, for the men, you never chase women. You focus on yourself. And you may say, well, that's pretty selfish. No, because that's the best way to get women is you focus on yourself, improvement, career, physique, everything else, uh, hobbies, charm, charisma, personality, cleverness. I think that's an often, Ill, not ill, unspoken trait that men should have, being clever. Uh, you you need to focus on yourself, support yourself, get all that. Just, just, just make this life count. Do not waste your time chasing women because it is a waste of time with a huge opportunity cost your self-improvement and you won't get the girls. It's very simple. You want to get the girls? Improve yourself. That's how simple it is. An hour at the gym is worth 10 at the nightclub. Very simple. Ladies, it's a little bit different because you're different. You're not men. <laughs> Should make that a sound clip. If you're a, a woman, a girl, decide now if you want a man, okay? If you want a man, your focus then should be to stay in shape. If that's what you truly want in life as a man, you need to stay in shape. There's a whole other set of be nice, show up on time, long hair, be fat. <laughs> but that's not showing in theaters, okay? <laughs> that's not going to happen. But I, this is just for ladies. Focus on your, your beauty and, and your demeanor. But And if you don't want men, cool. That's fine. Be honest with yourself. Then focus on yourself. It, it, it improve yourself to the maximum amount possible. Go have as many experiences as you want. Um, nothing wrong with that. But decide now because men's self-improvement leads them to women. It's, it's unfair. That's how it works. If you want to get a guy, you need to be beautiful. That's the, that's the primary one. It's not the only thing. They'll get you a guy, but it won't keep him. But if you don't want a guy, then you could go on self-improvement. That's cool too. Right? But, but don't, you can't do both. No, there should be rule. I really should have a separate set of rules for men and women, but uh, you cannot have it all. I guess it would be a derivation Lesson from rule number seven. <clears throat> rule number eight, go STEM or go home and not necessarily just STEM. You, you need to get a trade or a skill that increases the amount of money you could command every hour of life you give up to death, meaning work. Work is death. You don't get your time back. Make sure you are highly compensated for that hour of time. So you could be a tradesman. You could go into engineering, become a CPA, not an accountant. Go become a CPA. Pilot, surgeon, dentist, you guys know the same rate. If you're confused, go get the book Worthless. That'll be a starting point. Rule number nine, I believe we're on. <clears throat> no society can be wrong and the individual is right. This is a lot easier to tell now with the internet. You do not want to always blame society for your problems, but you, do, if you're a strong, independent man or woman, you've made yourself the best version of yourself you could possibly be. You support yourself. You do what's right. <clears throat> you have a good skill. You're, you're in shape. Da, da, da. Uh, if society says, you know, a girl shoots you down for a date, you're like, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not wrong. 
and that's an individual. But if all of a sudden you're getting stood, like for example, I, I talked to Jack Napier. I said, what percent of the time you get stood up? 90%. 90% of the time girls are flaking on it. That's unacceptable behavior. Now, if you didn't have the internet, you think, what's wrong with me? I must be horribly, there's something, am I disfigured? I just don't see it? No, there's something wrong societally with gals. Okay. Uh, that's that. And again, without the internet, we didn't know. We only had analog data. Um, society right now is telling all the white people they got privilege. And, and, and no, no. <laughs> like, wait a minute. My family didn't come here to the 1900s. We didn't have slaves. Matter of fact, we go back enough. I don't know if I probably were slaves of the British. Uh, you got to realize when the zeitgeist or the political authorities or the media is trying to brainwash you. Uh, no. You have to have independent thought and know that there are times, not always, not frequent, but it does happen that society is wrong and the individual is right. right? And you, the the power of that is real risky. You can It's a slippery slope because then you can blame everything on society. You can't do that. You got to make sure you're in shape. You got to make sure you got to try your all, every stone unturned. So that you know that if you did everything, they, like millennials have every right. Here's another perfect example. Millennials tell me, hang on. How not to become one, by the way. You millennials did everything you were told to by you. You did everything that was, quote, right. Where did it get you? And now it is no shock that the OK Boomer meme or phrase has come around. Uh, come around. Because society, your parents, the boomers, the professors, the teachers were wrong. Unfortunately, it took you 20 years of your adult life to figure that out, or teen and, and 30s to figure that out, not to mention $150,000 in student loan debt. But if only somebody had warned you about worthless degrees, but I, I don't know. Uh, it is critical for your future success to know when society is wrong. And another way we could probably say is if it sounds nice, if it sounds good, if, if it sounds great, it's wrong. <clears throat> so that's another way to put it there. And then finally, uh, very simple. Don't have kids you can't afford, either financially or time-wise or both. If you can't afford a kid, don't have a kid. If you can afford a kid, but you're not going to spend time raising a kid because you can't wait to ship it out to daycare or the public schools because you got your all-important career, don't have a kid because you don't want a kid. You, you want a kid. You don't want to be a parent. You don't want to give them love. And so there, that's it. Those are the 10 rules. Any super chats? We got two of them here. DJ Aftershock, do you got a job or something, man? I, I appreciate the money, but you're always around. Like, don't you? Rule 11, buy McMansion and Ornell and Blake School. Yes, send your kids to the Blake School. I substitute taught there once. Don't send your kids to the Blake School. Just, just get them, just homeschool your kids. If you love your kids, homeschool them. And uh, David Frost for five bucks. I'm 16, have a digital marketing gig. There we go. See, he didn't even have to go to high school. Do you need a business degree to look like a legitimate businessman? I feel pressure and I hate school. No, David, if you got a digital marketing gig, you already got that. That's why you go to college is to get a job. You do not have to go to college. You have saved yourself four years of your youth and about $100,000, 150000 if you include opportunity costs. Uh, I would talk to Seth Himes, look him up, uh, indemandjobs.com, I think it is. Uh, but if you could keep making money, man, you don't need to go to college. Now, the day might come that the digital marketing industry is flooded with people and then you could go to college. But man, dude, if you can do a job at 16 and you don't need and with digital marketing, you don't have to go to an office. You are way ahead, kid. Way ahead. <clears throat> uh, nonstop trade for two bucks women. I don't work out for men. <laughs> they don't. Do it for myself. Girl boss with PhD. And Joe Biden, hey, Joe Biden's in the house there. Joe Biden for five bucks. Hey, Cappy, thanks for your wisdom and books. I finally decided to go back to school and major in STEM and save for retirement. Thanks, buddy. The the presidential candidate, Joe Biden, is uh, is going to do that. Well, thanks, Joe. So, all right, that's it. Questions, answers, aholeconsulting.com. We'll see you guys later. No, assholeconsulting.com. I cursed to Awe, Micah Robinson, five bucks. Rule, tw rule 12, saving gold and silver and crypto because inflation will wreck you. True. All right, I got to go. Toodles, bye.